and to ensuring that there's a decreased turnover, as I'm sure that the panel has talked about quite extensively. Those are many of the challenges that are faced within our child welfare workforce. So I'll start with our budget proposals and just share a little bit about what is included in those budget proposals. And then I'll talk a bit about a project uh, that we are in uh, the beginning stages of. Uh, it's called a National Quality Improvement Center focused on workforce improvement for child welfare. And uh, actually my colleague Rebecca Huffman is also here and she may be able to fill in all the details uh, that I may leave out since she's our primary point uh, and lead on the particular project. So as it relates to uh, our budget proposals, clearly we at the Administration on Children, Youth, and Families, which includes the Children's Bureau, overseeing all of the uh, foster care and child abuse and neglect uh, prevention programs in the country, as well as the Family Youth Services Bureau, which includes runaway and homeless youth programs, domestic violence programs, and teen pregnancy programs. Uh, given that our breadth is fairly extensive, serving those that are the most vulnerable in our country, uh, both families and youth, we know that a skilled and supported workforce is the only way to really drive better outcomes. It's not the only way, but it is a, a critical component of being able to drive better outcomes for kids and families across this country. And we know that right now, unfortunately, there is not the support that is needed for our caseworkers, for our frontline workers, for our middle managers, as it relates to child welfare or many of the other human services across the country. And therefore, uh, we wanted to put our money where our mouth is. And so in our budget proposal that the president unveiled at the beginning of this fiscal year, uh, or the beginning of this uh, calendar year actually, uh, we have three primary proposals that are designed to actually invest more federal dollars in skilling up our federal child welfare workforce in particular. And the first of which is uh, this funding source called 4E. So those in the audience um, that have been around the child welfare world know what 4E <coughs> refers to, but I'm sure that there are some people in the audience that don't know what that is. So I will attempt uh, to explain, but basically it is the portion, the title 4E is the portion of the Social Security Act uh, that oversees primarily our foster care programs and oversees how we as a federal government fund states and counties to do the work that they need to do, to fund their caseworkers, to fund their caseworker training, and to provide uh, foster care uh, to families uh, and youth. So uh, one of the things that we proposed was to actually provide 4E funding for BSW and MSW training. So getting those social work degrees for both uh, employees of county and state child welfare agencies and contractors, since we know that so many of the uh, services that are provided to young people uh, and the resources extended to families are really actually executed by nonprofits that also have their own team of child welfare workers uh, that partner with the state and the county. So we want to make sure, uh, given the research that we've seen, we know that those that have the right training and that includes getting those masters in social works or those bachelors in social works, that training is really a foundation and a bedrock to be able to meet the needs of youth and families immediately upon hiring and be able to jump, jump into dealing with the trauma that young people experience or uh, the violence that a family may be experiencing at that moment. Those are not easy things for any of us to deal with. I know many of us in the room may have experienced those types of challenges, whether it be uh, you know, violent, domestic violence, mental health issues within our own families. Those aren't easy for us to deal with in our own <coughs> families, let alone walking into a stranger's home and being able to juggle that type of crisis. And so we know that paying for uh, this type of, uh, and paying much, more, you know, enhancing the amount that we pay for uh, BSW and MSW training is one way uh, to help improve uh, the skill set of our federal workforce. The second piece, so first we have uh, paying a higher match rate for BSW and MSW education. The second piece is uh, enhancing the match rate overall that we pay uh, for those that have those degrees. So the federal funding stream pays you know, a percentage at this point in time. We will enhance that rate uh, of the federal participation when 
the uh, county or state is able to increase their overall share of BSW and MSW trained employees. And then third, we have a special provision related to tribal workforce. As folks may know in the room, uh, some of the unique challenges related to tribes is that oftentimes they're very small. And so they don't have the same types of resources uh, you know, in terms of training programs, in terms of even peer-to-peer -peer learning that some of our states and counties may have. So we have a specific proposal related to building uh, the tribal workforce and again, enhancing our federal share of funding that we will pay uh, for tribal child welfare workers to get skilled up and get the training that they need. So those are the three proposals uh, that are in our budget this fiscal year. We highly recommend that many of the offices, uh, and uh, whether you're from the Senate or the House, that you take a look at these proposals. If your boss uh, is particularly interested in uh, doing something good for kids and families across this country, this is one way and a couple of our proposals that, uh, that we would love for you all to take up uh, if you so choose. And then the last thing, as I noted, in addition to our budget proposals that I wanted to talk about, was a new quality improvement center that we have initiated and is actually a, a new grant, so a cooperative agreement. Uh, we will be essentially testing innovative ways to ensure retention, uh, lower turnover, and quality workforce, uh, making sure that folks have the skills, again, that they need to serve kids and families. And we'll be experimenting, essentially, through this National Quality Improvement Center, testing out uh, a variety of different models to improve retention, uh, decrease turnover, and ensure high skill sets across the country. Uh, this is uh, you know, sort of a demonstration project, a number of them across the country, designed to take the research that we learned through these demonstrations, bring it back to the federal government so that we can then distribute these lessons learned and help states and counties develop the types of systems that they need in place in order to implement uh, the best practices that we take away from these demonstrations. So that's exciting work that's just beginning again. Rebecca's here uh, in the audience front row uh, who's taking the lead on that work. And again, the goals there are improved worker recruitment, um, improved agency culture and climate uh, in terms of supporting workers uh, to meet their goals and to meet their professional advancement, uh, career trajectory needs that they may need uh, to you know, really want to stay there. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, there's a limited amount of money for raising salaries. We know that's one component, and we support uh, paying caseworkers more because we believe that they deserve it. But also changing the culture of these organizations so that caseworkers feel that they're being invested in, whether that be through monetary uh, supports or other supports. We also uh, have the goal of improved child welfare practices related to safety, permanence, and well-being. Clearly, that's the point here of having high, highly skilled uh, and, and uh, committed uh, workforce, uh, individuals, and caseworkers. And then we want to make sure that these very <coughs> lessons that we learn, again, can be replicated across the country. So our goal is not just to put some money out there and have some communities do that work and do it well, but instead to really support the rest of the country in elevating their practices as well. So we look forward to hearing any other suggestions or questions that you may have about these proposals. And we hope uh, that this is just a couple of steps that we're trying to take and that we are able to partner with you all uh, to, to make uh, to really improve the workforce across the country into the future. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.